Hello! Now I thought I'd do a video going over some of the equipment I might wear in the event of an actual sort of civil war or urban violence or whatever in the UK. Of course, bear in mind this is totally theoretical, so um, I'm not claiming anything's going to happen before you get all the usual people jump on thinking you're a terrorist or whatever else. So what equipment would I actually wear? Uh, this is not including weaponry or, weaponry or anything like that, the house like that. This is just simply including sort of defensive measures. So, um, I'll start off with the helmet and we'll work our way down. This is a British Mark 7 helmet. It's got the sort of um, helmet MTP helmet cover on it with some of the Hessian in it. But you also see that I've put a scrim net through it now. The reason being that, as I said before, scrim nets are really effective. So, having it down in front of your face, um, if you're trying to hide in the woods or something like that, makes you much harder to recognise. Again, I might tailor the scrim net in a different way at the moment. As you can see, I've just simply wrapped it through the helmet, but that works fairly well, actually. As you can see, to cover your face off of the front of the helmet, um, you can just literally flip it up and flip it down. So um, there you go, that's the scrim net through there. Um, also helps hide the shape of the helmet a bit with that down in front, so it looks less of an actual helmet shape, and that's the same thing that a lot of the Hessian type stuff on the helmet does as well. It makes the helmet less obvious to a helmet shape from a distance but obviously as you can see this being down makes a big difference to realizing there's somebody there and again you can get camo scrim nets because i've got like that mar pat one so maybe that's a better idea i haven't decided yet but this actual kind of just having it like the mesh type works quite well so there's that so that's what i've got for the helmet the mark 7 helmet kevlar level 3a so it gives you obviously good protection from um, pistol caliber rounds shotgun rounds things like that won't do much to stop a rifle unless you're very lucky and the hit comes in from an odd angle. So there you go. So what other armour am I wearing? Because that will interest people. I've got the old Northern Ireland flak vest on, like a flak jacket. Again, can't really stop rounds. It might stop pistol rounds if you're lucky, but it's mostly a shrapnel thing, hence why it's got all the neck protection on it. Also because if you're in the UK, lots of people will probably be trying to stab you rather than being armed. So um, having a flak jacket like this on is quite good. It doesn't restrict movement all that much. A lot of people complain these are really heavy compared to a plate carrier. They are still much lighter. Underneath that I have my regular Kevlar vest. So if I just do that, you can probably see that. I've got the Kevlar level 2 vest on with stab protection. So this is like an additional layer of armour on top of the Kevlar vest, which would also stop some shrapnel and bullets. So, not as good as a plate carrier, but makes you a lot more mobile. And, you know, if you're kind of getting shot at with rifles, you've got in a bit of a problem anyway. So that's what I've got sort of set up there. So obviously you can have that enclosed your neck a bit more if you wanted to. Um, I've currently got MTP on, um, but in the event of a civil war, you might not want to be wearing the same camouflage as the soldiers, depending on whose side they're on. You'd hope they're on the side of civilians, but you never know. Um, so I could easily switch this out for one of many other camouflages that would be equally as effective I just got this one out for the sake of the video. Um, in terms of leggings or whatever else, trousers, I'd probably just have Flectarn trousers on or, you know, another good woodland camo trousers. At the moment I've just got shorts on. As for boots, I've got a lot of different selection of boots as well. So, the helmet, I could potentially switch out for my riot helmet if I thought there was more need for that. However, this helmet offers, obviously offers a much better level of physical protection and it's got like the cover on it so you can, as I said, put the scrim over and then you've got a much more effective, you know, set up that way. So um, this is probably what my defensive loadout would be. As I said, this is obviously not offensive in any way. Of course, I forgot to mention I've got my Avon CT12 in here with two filters. Um, so I've, And I've also got the chemical emergency poncho in there. So what that means is basically in this bag I've got um, emergency NBC poncho. I wouldn't bother carrying an NBC suit on me for obvious reasons. Um, and, you know, as I was saying in there, you've got the spare filter. So you've got a filter ready to go that still works, um, just to slap on the mask. And then a sealed filter with years on the, um, you know, date for when I'd actually need a filter. So that's how I've got my setup done for in there. And I think that would be a good setup. So... There you go, that's my sort of survival kind of what I'd be wearing in the event of a civil war. Assuming that, you know, civilians were going to have to fight into it. Because as I keep saying to people, I am not a soldier, I am a civilian. Because people keep asking me, no, I am, you know, no stolen valour. I am a civvy, I'm medically unfit to serve, even if I wanted to. So, no, I am a civvy, I'm definitely not pretending to be a soldier. Although I've got a lot of the gear because I buy it as surplus. I find it interesting and 
with the way a lot of Western countries are going, you think you might soon need this stuff. So, um, there we go. As I said, I could just wear the level 2 Kevlar vest underneath the flak jacket if I wanted to, and you can wear that under a coat. But this is kind of my fully geared up stuff, and as I said, I've not included weapons in this video for obvious reasons. Um, I've also got some quite good gloves I'll quickly show you. So here are the gloves, I bought these from Gearbest, they're sort of in olive drab, sort of brown. Uh, you can wear it still with your watch on one arm. Uh, the watch is the Vostok Amphibia because I'd want a tough military style watch rather than, um, you know, a fashion watch, obviously. In a survival situation. Uh, your fingers are fairly flexible in here. I also have a version of gloves very similar to these which are fingerless. So I guess in the winter I'd be more likely to wear these. In the summer I might be more inclined to wear the fingerless gloves. Uh, I wouldn't bother with camo face paint because that would set off my eczema and sort of dermatitis. But as said, using the scrim you can easily um, hide your face using that. So, there you go. That's all the gear. As I said, some of the camo would be prone to changing. Uh, the boots would be whichever boots I feel like wearing at the time. Um, the trousers are the same as that, you know, applies to all the camo. But I think this gear does look sort of fairly competent. And obviously the protective values of it is pretty good. As I said, with most of this stuff, you can't expect to survive rifle rounds with it. But I'd think the flak jacket on top of the Kevlar vest would be give adequate protection from stabbing and pistol caliber rounds, um, as well as shotguns, which I think in uh, the event of something happening in the UK, you're probably more likely to get hit by. It would also stop arrows and crossbow bolts, both layers. If somebody had a bodkin on it and they were shooting at a high enough power crossbow, it might manage to go through the flak jacket and the um, Kevlar vest. But for the most point, I don't think it would manage that. So there you go. This is the loadout. As you can see, I think it works fairly well.